All right, a new video, a new method. Let's look at groups of order 1,785. As usual, we will start out seeing why the old methods fail before we see what the new idea should be. So as usual, this is the opposite order of the book that always gives the method first and then the application. I kind of like this approach a little bit better, but it's your cup of tea, I guess. Uh, let's see here. First, let's compute N3. So we're looking at groups of order 1,785, and we're seeing whether or not there are any simple groups of that order. Spoiler alert, if there was, the Flight-Thompson theorem is wrong, so there shouldn't be. We're looking for things congruent to 1 mod 3 that divide 5 times 7 times 17. So that's 2 mod 3, that's 1 mod 3, and that is 2 mod 3. So 1 mod 3. If you multiply things, two things that are 2 mod 3, you'll get 1 mod 3 again. So 3 times 17 also is congruent to 1 mod 3. So what is that? 21, 51? Or am I off by 1? 7, 14, 21, 51. Ah, I'm multiplying the wrong two things. I see. Okay. 35, 85. There we go. That's correct. And then 1785. And 5, we're looking at things congruent to 1 mod 5. Um, let's see again. 3 times 7 works, so 21. 3 times 17, 51. And the remaining two choices, 85 and 1785, are multiples of 5. So that's it. Those are the three possible numbers of CELO 5 subgroups. The number of possible CELO 7 subgroups is either going to be a 1 or things congruent to 1 mod 7 that divide 3 times 5 times 17. 3 times 5 is 15. That's congruent to 1 mod 7. 85, that's congruent to 1 mod 7. And of course I found a typo. That shouldn't be 1785, that should be 1785 divided by 3, whatever that is. And so that ends up being the total list. So far I still have to do N17, which ends up being 1 and 35. So there's too many options to even have any hope of doing method one with the counting arguments because, well, there's too many cases to consider. So you try method two, the smallest case such that k, n divides k factorial is going to have to be 17. So we can't have anything, any groups of index smaller than 17 which means for any P, the number of CELA subgroups, P subgroups has to be greater than seven, greater than or equal to 17 for any P. Congratulations, this doesn't help us a whole lot. And so we're stuck with these cases left, assuming G is simple course. So that's as far as we can get with method two. So it, we've got two choices here. It's always smarter to pick the number that's easier to work with. So we're going to let G act on the CELO 17 subgroups. It's going to give us a homomorphism to S35. The normalizer then of G P. So we're going to take a CELA 30 17 subgroup. We're going to identify phi G with its image because we're assuming this homomorphism is injective since C G is simple. Then what is the order of this normalizer? Well, what's the index of the normalizer? 
it is seven, it is 35, because that's one of the Silo theorems. So then what is the order of this normalizer? It's three times 17. Good news, of course, 17 is a prime. And so we're working in, oh no, we're working in 35 factorial. So we see that um, P is not a CELO 17 subgroup of S35 because 35 factorial includes two factors of 17. There's 17 and then there's 34, which is two times 17. And so the CELO 17 subgroup has order 17 squared, not 17. So the previous method doesn't work here. We can't look at the normalizer of the CELO 17 subgroup here and try to do divisibility criterion because it's not a CELO 17 subgroup anymore. However, there is still some good news. The method we're going to use and the remaining method we're going to come up with both still involve looking at these normalizers anyways. But it's no longer looking at the symmetric group. So here the key idea to note is this is a group of order 3 times 17. Well, do we know about groups of order 3 times 17? Well, 3 does not divide 17 minus 1. So this group is cyclic. In our classification of groups of order P times Q, this is one of those cases. It must be a direct product. And direct product of distinct primes, these are cyclic groups. That's isomorphic to a cyclic group itself. We've been focusing on 17, so let's focus on 3. Let's let Q be a CELO 3 subgroup in this normalizer. Then the point is PQ is abelian. and is a subgroup of this normalizer. In fact, it's actually equal in this particular case by order considerations. In particular, that means every element in P commutes with every element in Q. So, that means that P is a subgroup in the normalizer of Q. Q has order three. So by size considerations here, Q is actually a CELO subgroup in the larger group. And P is a subgroup of this normalizer and P has order 17. Hence, 17 divides the order of this normalizer. Which means that 17 cannot be a factor in this index. Oh look, that rules out the remaining two numbers for n sub 3. We've ran out of options, therefore there can't be a simple group of order 1785. So then what is this method I just used?
Well, what you're doing is that you've got two primes, P and Q, dividing the order of G, with the feature that P divides Q does not divide Q minus 1. Here I'm following the book now, so I'm switching the rules of P and Q from what I was just doing. And you're in the situation where P divides the order of the normalizer of a CeeLo Q subgroup. Then the strategy is to let P be a CeeLo P subgroup in Q. Then the point is that PQ has order PQ and is cyclic, and more importantly is abelian. and is a subgroup of this normalizer, which, as I mentioned, means that you can conclude, you can also get that it's in the normalizer of G of P. More accurately, you can at least get Q to be in the normalizer of G of P. Because every element of Q is going to commute with every element of P because it's abelian. And in particular, conjugating P by every element of Q is going to give you P back as a result. And thus, well, that's different. Why is it doing? Hold on. Oh, marker when I want pencil. Thus you have Q divides the size of the normalizer here. And so your hope is that one of two things will happen. Either P is a CeeLo subgroup of G, in which case you can now conclude that Q cannot divide NP. And so this limits the number of cases. Why? Because if it divides this normalizer, then it can't divide the index. Oh, I forgot to point out the other statement here. One's usually assuming that you don't have the higher powers. Let me be very careful. One usually requires this extra step. Forgot to mention that. You actually want the CeeLo Q subgroup to be of order Q in order for this last step to be true. You want to arrive at this point, because if Q does not divide this normal divides this normalizer, then it can't divide the index. No, this situation happens when P squared does not divide the order of G. Or you want to be in case two, if you're really lucky, which is that the normalizer of G of P thus becomes G. Somehow you're able to argue that because you managed to get this extra divisibility criterion, and you have some other reason to argue that this normalizer has high enough order. So this method allows you to rule out certain cases. And this is one of the only methods we've seen, and is the only method we cover, that actually uses multiple primes at once. Whereas all the other methods tend to hone in on a specific prime. Of course, this does, beg the, does make us wonder what happens when you remove this condition. Well, once you get down here, so instead you've got, say, Q to the K divides G, but Q to the K plus 1 does not. 
and you get down here, the only thing you could say instead is that you can only remove one power of q. So it allows you to remove some cases, which is still helpful information. This other case, though, is a bit more annoying. Well, I mean, it's still the same, but the, the issue you run into is then once you get rid of this assumption, you have to ask what it did, what you do. What if P is not a CELA subgroup in all of G? Well, then you just remember that P is going to be contained in a CELA subgroup by Celo's theorem, and so this normalizer G of P is going to contain this normalizer in P star, which is going to be divisible by a power of P, and so then you're going to have Q times a very high power of P divides the normalizer. So I will actually show an example of this calculation. We'll look at 3,675. So suppose there's a simple group of order 3,675, which is 3 times 5 squared times 7 squared. The number of possible CELA 3 subgroups is either 1, 25, 40, or wait, 35, 49, or 25 times 49. The number of CELA 5 subgroups is either 1 or 21. And the number of CELA 7 subgroups is going to be 1 or 15. We see method one's not going to help us here. So by method two, the smallest k factorial, such that n divides k factorial, well, it's going to have to be able to be divisible by 7 squared. So you're going to need to be at least 14 factorial to get two factors of 7. And once you're past 14 factorial, you're past 10 factorial, which is the smallest you need to get two factors of 5. So we need n to be at k to be at least 14. So that rules out those cases, and that's it. So the book focuses on 15 here. So at this point, one thing I should note is that we don't actually need to talk about the symmetric group actions here, which is what I was doing before, because this method doesn't involve it at all. We're just looking at normalizers in G of P, where P is a CELO 7 subgroup. That's important to note because it's possible in other videos I might look at examples where I apply this method to other pairs of primes other than the largest possible choice. So this normalizer as index 15 by the CELO theorem, and so it has order, what the difference is, 5 times 7 squared. So to keep with our notation, actually I should use Q here, because Q is 7 and p is 5, and we do see that 5 does not divide 7 minus 1. Well, then, according to our method, the idea is to take p to be a CELO 5 subgroup of this normalizer. And so p has order 5. And, in fact, we see that what is n sub 5 for this normalizer, which is a group of that order, 
Well, the possible options have to be congruent to 1 mod 5 and it has to divide 49. So the only option is 1, which means that P is a normal subgroup here, which is enough to give us the type of conclusions we've been hoping for, which is that Q must be a subgroup of the normalizer in G of P. Or at the very least, this normalizer is. But of course, P is not a Celo subgroup of the larger group because five is not five squared. So P is contained in a Celo subgroup. of the larger group. The larger group uh, P star has order 5 squared. So P has index 5, which means it's a maximal subgroup in a P group. So P is in fact normal in P star. Remember, P groups are neopotent groups, and so the maximal subgroup has to be normal. And so that tells me P star is also a subgroup of this normalizer. And thus we have that the smallest subgroup generated by P star and the normalizer of Q is contained in the normalizer of P. So here we have a subgroup of order p squared and a subgroup, well, what is p in this case? It's 5, right? A subgroup of order 5 squared and a subgroup of order whatever ng was. It's 5 times 7 squared. So the least common multiple is at least 5 times 7 squared. It could be bigger. What does this imply? It implies that the index of NGP in G must divide three. Because it yeah, must divide three because that is oops, all that is left over up here. So they have a subgroup of prime index. So if this is one, then congratulations. P is a normal subgroup. and g is not simple, if it's three, then that means you have a subgroup of index three. And so then we can finally go back to method two and point out the smallest thing we needed. Uh, the smallest index of a subgroup has to be 15. And so that's also not possible. Or I mean 14, right? And so 3 is not allowed there. So if G is a simple group of order 3,675, you can't have 3 here. And you can't have 1, but those are the only two options. So we have a contradiction, ergo G can't be simple.